Hey everyone, welcome back to to DJing. This is Paul and in this video what I want to do is talk about how to connect your DJ board. Here I'm going to be using the DDJ FLX4 to an external mixer. So the mixer I'm going to be using is the Allen & Heath Z6. This is my mini mixer of choice, although I have a lot of other ones. And typically this is pretty similar across your own mixers. A lot of people, a lot of DJs I know they use Yamaha mixers. So a lot of this is going to basically translate very easily to the mixer you use. And of course, if you're using a different mixer and you have a question, just leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Now, the first thing you should note is in many cases, you won't even want to use a mixer if you can get away with it. It's much better to just plug your DJ board directly into your active speakers if you can, or directly into your amplifier. And you, you don't need the extra gain or anything. Now, if you're trying to run a bunch of mics or you need to plug into a venue sound system that has a mixer already there, then in that case you will need to run into a mixer, but I try to avoid running it if I don't have to, running some extra thing. It's just one more thing that can add noise to the signal that can go wrong. So it's better if you don't have to use one, you don't have to, but of course a board like this only has one mic input. So if I wanna run wireless mics and things, I would be limited to doing this. With a cable like this, which if you remember from our cable video, this is RCA, to XLR, RCA male to XLR male, I can plug this directly from my board into some active speakers, or I can connect it directly to the mixer. So this is gonna be the first cable that I use, and we're gonna be using this to go into the inputs here. So what I'm going to do is look at the top where I have my RCA outputs, and I'm gonna plug the right RCA into the red port, and the left one into the white or black one. Um, you can remember that right is red, they both start with R and that's how we connect this. So now that we've connected this, I'm going to just move this to the side so we can take a look at the mixer and I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how to set this up with your mixer. So these are the ends that we have here from the XLR male ends and here is my mixer. So what I'm gonna do is make sure all of my gains are turned completely down. You have multiple gain stages here, so it's important to understand the difference. This is often called your preamp gain. In this case, we're going to set this as low or as close to zero as we possibly can. You'll see this is going to be a little bit different. These are your sort of mixer gains. Sometimes these are represented by faders here. And then you have your master fader here that controls the overall volume. So we're gonna start with all of this turned down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mixer on. Now, one thing that's really important is that this 48 volt phantom power switch is turned off. When it's turned on on most mixers, you'll see a little light. Sometimes it says phantom power, sometimes it says 48 volts. It's really important you have this switched off before you plug your DJ gear in because you don't want to be sending any voltage through. I see a lot of DJs using this. You can actually damage your gear, so just be sure to keep that off. This typically will only run through the mic input, so if, you're, if you are running Condenser microphones, which this is for, you can run those through the XLR inputs, but don't use the XLR inputs for your controller if you're also running those as well. But typically you'll know when you need to have that on, and if you're a DJ, just keep that off. There's no reason to ever have that on. Now what I'm gonna do is take my XLR inputs and bring them into channel one and channel two. I'm gonna have channel one be the left and channel two be the right. So this is what I'm going to do here. Now, if we look here, we have our EQ section. This is our low and our high. There's some often sometimes a mid band. And I'm just gonna keep these the same. This is the same as what you would see on your DJ controller. And up here on the top, we have this instrument button. We're gonna keep this off. This is used if you're plugging in a guitar directly into the TS port here. And then you have a low cut filter. This is really helpful if you're using mics, but you don't wanna have this enabled when you're using your DJ gear or you're not gonna have any bass. So we're gonna make sure both of those are switched off. Now, in this mixer, if you notice the range, it goes from about 5 dB all the way up to 60 dB. Um, this one actually goes up quite a bit, whereas the stereo inputs go from infinity to plus 15. So this, the reason this one goes more is because you could plug a mic in, a mic level signal is going to be much lower than your line level signal. So this allows you to boost that a lot. But here in this case, I'm just going to keep this turned down 100% all the way as low as possible. Now what I'm gonna do is look at my mix knobs and I wanna turn both of these up to about unity or about zero. What's really important is you don't wanna be having any clipping or anything distorting the signal anywhere in your gain path. This is an analog mixer so it will actually clip and most mixers can clip internally unless they're running some special digital format where it won't. So it's really important we don't clip. We don't wanna clip at the preamp stage so we can't have this at maximum. We don't wanna have this 
maximum either. So zero is typically pretty good. This should give us plenty of room. And because we're running two channels, because we're running this is the left and this is the right, we actually need to set the pans to pan each of these left and right. We have two signals, a left and a right, and we need to tell this mixer that this is the left channel and this is the right channel because by default it doesn't know. So by default, the left channel is going down the center and the right is going down the center. So we're kind of really just mixing them both to mono here. This will allow you, by doing it this way, turning the left channel all the way to the left and the right channel all the way to the right, is a much more, there's just a much better way to do things. So now when you plug your speakers into your left and right out here, it's mirrored this way. This left channel is only getting this. This right channel is only getting this the way we've set it up. And lastly, once you've set this up, you can go ahead and start bringing up your gain. What I typically like to do is set this at zero, set these as close to zero, set everything here at zero, and then what I'll do is use the master volume here on my controller. So once I've set this up where everything is zero and everything is not clipping, I will start with this turn down all the way to minus infinity, play a song, and then go ahead and bring this up. And typically this is what I would use to adjust my volume. I won't even touch this throughout the night. Now, if you are running microphones, then you may actually need to run it. And in that case, maybe you would need to actually account for the fact that you need to boost your mic signal, something like this. So maybe you need to adjust the gain and maybe your master would need to come down. But in most cases, I think this is the best way to work. You're simplifying what you're needing to do. Now, this is really interesting because we're using two inputs on the mixer, but you have the option on a mixer like this to also use the stereo inputs. Some mixers have stereo inputs and some mixers have RCA inputs as well. So to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and take this cable and disconnect it from my controller and from this mixer. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an RCA to TS cable. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open it or undo the Velcro that I have on it. And in the back of my controller, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, plug the right one into the red, the left one or the white one into the white symbol. And going here on the mixer, what I'm going to do is plug this stereo input. Now I could have plugged it in like this, and this would be the same way as before. Make sure you plug it in all the way. But a better way is to actually use the stereo input. So what I'm going to do now is basically put the right in the right hole and the left in the left hole. Now this is now being controlled by stereo one. And by doing this, this mix knob actually is going to control the left and the right volume together. So to raise the volume, you don't need to twist two knobs. You have one knob and it's basically already doing this like as if I had done this, but it allows it to be one channel. That's why it's the Z6. This is actually a six channel mixer. You have two mono inputs and two stereo inputs and each of these stereo inputs technically has two. So that's four and then five and six here. So um, often you'll see sometimes it labeled one, two, and then three slash four. The one with the slash generally means it's a stereo input, so it actually is getting left and right. And one of the ways you can also tell is rather than a pan knob, rather than panning the signal, you have a balance. So if I was to twist this all the way to the left, this isn't panning the signal, this is just only playing this. So doing this is the same as if I just basically unplugged this, and turning it this way is basically the same as if I had unplugged this. However, the thing to note, notice we don't have instrument level and we don't have the, the anything else because this doesn't accept mic inputs, this only accepts line level inputs. The thing we do need to be careful of is this preamp gain. So what I'm going to do actually is turn this up to zero, which is about 12 o'clock, like so. And then I'm going to bring this up to where it's labeled zero as well. Now, some people like running it at minus six. It's really up to you. Once again, the main thing is you don't want to be clipping. You can go ahead and test it. Make sure, go listen, and make sure you're not clipping anything out on, the, um, on your master system. Make sure it just sounds good. It sounds full. You're not losing any bass. It's not too loud, things like that. And watch your levels here. Be sure nothing here is peaking. And as long as you do it this way, you follow these practices, things are going to be great. Typically with these preamps, you set the preamps and you can just leave them alone. And typically it would be this mix knob that you control throughout the night to make sure you're not clipping. As long as this is at zero or below, you can typically use this to control the amount, but you don't want to clip your preamp and you don't want to sort of clip the signal internally either. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong, but as long as you basically set everything at zero or below and zero is probably the maximum you'd want to set it to unless 
you're doing something else like running these mics or something, um, you should be good. The last thing I want to mention is if you don't have access to an RCA or an, a TS cable, you can use an RCA cable like this and you can get these adapters. I got these from DJ Tech Tools, which just go on the end. So you could technically run an RCA cable with these little ends on the front. I got these as these sort of chroma cables. And when I attach these to the end, I can run these through the stereo input as well. So this is how you set up a mixer. Often the mixer may have other things like other zones and things. I find that to be, it can be very complicated for people getting started. What you care about is getting your signal to the master output and then plugging things in the master output. This is what you need to know as a DJ. You don't need to know about monitoring the signal. We're not gonna be using the headphone cueing here because once again, you get headphone cueing on your DJ controller or on your board. So you're not gonna be monitoring out of this even though you could. A lot of these tools are there for bands or for other types of performance performers that you just technically don't need to know. What you need to know is when you're plugging it into mono inputs, be sure to pan them. And when you're plugging them into a stereo input, you can just basically leave the pant balance at the center. There's no reason to have the high cut or to do any of this sort of boosting or cutting here. And then just basically turn it up to zero and leave it alone. And once again, watch for clipping, make sure you're not distorting the sound. You can tell if it sounds like things are crackling or it just sounds like it's getting really muffled or there's no bass. Chances are you may be clipping and most mixers are going to have red lights or things on them to let you know. Sometimes it goes green, then it turns yellow and then it turns red. So as long as you follow a guide like this, you should be good to go. Once again, I recommend using that volume on your controller. The other thing I'll say is be very careful running this super low. So some people I see, they run this really close to minus infinity and then they have these maxed out. The reason this is not a good idea is you want to use the, as full of the range of all of your preamps as possible, which is why I typically like trying to kind of juice these as much as possible. If you're keeping it at zero, you're not really needing to do anything too bad to the signal. You're not needing to boost it a lot, which can add noise and you're not needing to cut it a lot either. It's just kind of keeping it pretty consistent. And this mixer is really just here to pass the signal from your DJ controller through and add anything else additionally that you would like. So anyway, hope you found this helpful. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and uh, let me know and I'll see you in the next video.